Hey, I'm Jay, and today we're going to do a DIY for a diverter valve on our Mark 7 GTI. This will go in both the 1.8T and 2.0T TSI platforms, and this will be the last diverter valve that you ever have to buy. The factory diverter valves are prone to failure with the diaphragm, and these are not because these have a billet aluminum vacuum actuated piston. This kit comes with everything you're going to need, including your springs, and there's two options. You can have the less stiff blue option, which is for stock to lightly modified, or the red, which is slightly stiffer for higher boost applications. And it's all covered under our lifetime replacement program. So let's jump on in. You only need a few simple tools for this job. I've got a couple of ratchets, a pick for the electrical clip, a little hand tool or, and an extension help for some of the harder to reach areas. We have a T30 and a five, a four, and a three millimeter Allen. And lastly, a seven millimeter for our intake clamp. Like most Mark 7s, ours is heavily modified. We have our ECS intake on here, our oil catch can, and that's really the only things in the way of this particular job. But for the most part, it's similar to stock. We're gonna be following along with our PDF, which will be linked down in the description. And we're going to start by just removing our intake. Just loosen this clamp and get it out of the way. And we'll put this out of the way. And now we will remove the hose for our catch can. Now we have our ECS tuning turbo inlet pipe on here. Uh, but if you're working with stock, it's the same premise. We're just going to loosen the captive bolt and we're going to twist it so that it's out of the way of our diverter valve. And now we can unplug and get our diverter valve removed. And this is just held on by three five millimeter Allen bolts. And she's out. Now that we have our diverter valve out, I wanted to do some comparison between the stock one and our ECS diverter valves. This is just a solid one piece with a rubber diaphragm inside that's electronically actuated. Whereas these are actually, you're able to disassemble them. And like I had said before, it has the billet aluminum piston inside. Uh, so you can remove that, clean it as you need, uh, and service it to keep it lasting longer. For this application, we're going to use the less stiff blue spring because this car does not put out that much boost. So you seat it in like so and screw it together. And then instead of being electronically activated, this will be vacuum actuated. And so we'll hook up some vacuum lines and we'll get this installed. Now we will attach our actuator to our mounting bracket with the provided hardware. And then with a four millimeter Allen, we just secure this. Remove old O-ring and install the provided O-rings on the diverter valve. Slides into place like a glove. So we came out of the top of our diverter valve and we ran into the top of our actuator and then down near the plug there's another line that goes to the bottom of the valve. And next we'll run a T off of this fitting here and that will splice in like that. Now we put it back together. So because this fitting was so small, we decided to splice into our new line. Uh, so we just plug this straight in and we're going to splice these together about here. Uh, it's all the same vacuum, so it works best for this application. And then lastly, we just have our extension. All right, the diverter valve is installed. All of our vacuum lines are run. Our electrical extension is run. Uh, all that's left is to put our turbo inlet pipe back on and our intake and then take this for a test drive. Well, that job is pretty simple. You should be able to get it done in just about an hour. Uh, we'll link the product kit down in the description as well as a link to the PDF. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and check back for more enthusiast content.